Hello and welcome to Sunday School Lesson number 45. Today we are talking about sleep health. Sleep health, enjoying divine health and healthy sleep. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to learn. We pray, O oh Lord, that as many as are suffering from one sleeping disorder or the other, they will find healing, they will find rest and restoration in you, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, don't let us sleep the sleep of death, death, or rather let us sleep unto life, let us sleep unto health and joy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sleep health is uh, something that captures uh, what uh, tries to understand the effect of sleep on human beings. We're going to attempt to study the effect of sleep on human beings. There are some sleep disorders and we're going to see if there's anything that can be done, the remedies to those sleeping disorders. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about stages of sleep, what happens during sleep, um, how much sleep we need, and when there are disorders, what can be done about those disorders. I pray that as we study, we'll gain better understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. Our text is taken from Proverbs chapter 6, verses 9 to 11. Proverbs 6, 9 to 11, and it says, How long will you slumber, O sluggard? When will you rise from your sleep? A little slumber, a little sleep, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall your poverty come on you like a prowler, and your need like an armed man. Okay, so we're going to see, we've, in the last lesson we said it's not good to sleep too much, it's also not good to sleep too little. So we're going to see where that balance lies so that we can have a sound, good health. We're going to look at some of the lifestyle habits that we need to form to ensure that we have a sound and good sleep health. Our memory verse is taken from Acts 20 verse 9. Acts 20 verse 9, it says, And there sat in a window a certain young man called Eutychus, and being fallen asleep, being fallen into a deep sleep, and as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep and fell down from the third lot and was taken up dead. In the New Living Translation, it says, As Paul, as Paul spoke on and on, a young man named Eutychus, sitting on the windowsill, became very drowsy. Finally, he fell sound asleep and dropped three stories to his death below. This is a tragic story. Apostle Paul was preaching and he was preaching for so long uh, that the, there's a particular young man who was only sitting on the windows. He wasn't sitting properly. He got drowsy and after a while the sleep progressed into deep sleep, sound sleep. So much so that he fell off and uh, died. But if you read the story further, Apostle Paul prayed for him. He came back to life. So we're going to look at the stages and length and spectrum of sleep. We're going to also discuss some sleep disorders. This is not a medical seminar, so I'm sure there will be medical people who can give you better background on these sleep disorders. But it's just enough for us to know that when we don't have a balance in our sleeping habit, there might be something wrong. It may not, you may not be enjoying good sleep health. Today we have two outlines. The first one talks about the stages and spectrum of sleep, and the second outline talks specifically about some sleep disorders. So there are different stages of sleep. The first one is slumber or dozing. Okay, when we, a lot of us slumber and doze, maybe we're in a vehicle that is traveling for so long, or you're sitting in front of the TV or reading a book that's not that uh, exciting. We tend to slumber, we tend to doze off. And that's what happened to the virgins in Matthew 25. Matthew 25 verses 1 to 5, it says, Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. So these 10 virgins were waiting for the bridegroom. The bridegroom didn't arrive on time. They got tired 
they slumbered, they dozed off. So that is the first stage of sleep. And remember in the um, memory verse that we read, that young one who was sitting on the windowsill became drowsy. So he must have slumbered, he must have dozed, and then he progressed to the next stage of sleep. So slumbering is the first stage, dozing is the first stage. You don't, you don't need any special position. Some can doze sitting up, some can doze watching TV or reading a book, or sometimes even when there's a little bit of lull, a little bit of quiet, people tend to doze off uh, and just uh, slumber. The next stage, which is deeper than slumber, is sleep itself, proper sleep. And Proverbs 2.24 says, when you lie down, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down and your sleep will be sweet. That is a deeper, ref refreshing sleep is different from slumber. For most people to get that kind of sleep, you probably need to be lying down. It's not likely that you will uh, fall soundly asleep in an awkward position. Okay, so that is the next stage of sleep. It's deeper than, uh, than slumbering. The stage after that is called deep sleep. Deep sleep, you know, really, really deep and you're not you're totally unaware of what's going on around you. When someone is in a deep sleep, it's difficult to arouse them. I'm sure there are people that you have to shake and beat a few times before they come back to life, before they come awake. So deep sleep is deeper than regular sleep. And the example is found in Genesis chapter 2, verses 21 to 23. You remember the story of creation. Genesis chapter 2, verses 21 to 23. It says, And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he took up one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib with which the Lord, which the Lord had taken from the man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, It is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. So God caused Adam to fall into a deep sleep. That surgery probably would not have been possible if Adam had not been fully, deeply asleep. If he had, it was just ordinary sleep, a little tap, he would have woken up. So that's the difference between regular sleep and deep sleep. Regular sleep, it's, it's easy to be, to be awakened. Just a little tap or a little noise can wake you up. But in a deep sleep, you know, you really go much deeper and things can be done like this surgery, the first ever recorded surgery that God performed. Now, beyond this deep sleep is uh, something that is called, uh, that there's something deeper than deep sleep, okay? Um, when we sleep, when we fall deeply asleep, sometimes we go into a trance or get some, some dreams, some visions revealed, but that's the brim of deep sleep. They're totally separated from our environment. Now, beyond deep sleep is the sleep of death or coma. The sleep of death or coma, when one is unconscious. That is not just deep sleep, this is unconsciousness. In Psalm 13 verse 3, the psalmist prayed to the Lord, said, Consider and hear me, O Lord my God, enlighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. The sleep of death is total unconsciousness. There is no coming back. Jeremiah 51, 57 says, I will make drunk her princes and wise men, her governors, her deputies, and her mighty men. They shall sleep a perpetual sleep and not awake, says the king, whose name is the Lord of hosts. So the sleep of death is permanent. It's, it's there, you know, you're just waiting, for, to, waiting to die. Okay, it's, There's no consciousness again. One has lost consciousness. And then the last stage, is death itself. The last stage is death. You know, people come out of comas, you know, medically induced comas or even comas that they fell into themselves. People sometimes do come out of coma. But a lot of people pass from coma to death. Death is the final stage in the stages of death. And we saw that in John 11, 11 to 14. John 11, 11 to 14. <coughs> Excuse me. These things he said, and after that, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. And his disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get well. However, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought he was sleeping. He was speaking about someone taking a rest in sleep. 
then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Jesus used an analogy. He described the death as sleep. So sometimes you say, oh, someone died or someone slept in the Lord. That is permanent. That is death. Okay, but it's different from the sleep that we get in rest or the deep sleep or even coma because people sometimes uh, come out of coma. But the sleep of death or death itself is death and one is no longer conscious and can no longer come back. So the fact that sometimes the analogy of sleep, death is described as sleep is an analogy. Jesus meant that Lazarus was dead because his disciples took him literally and said, oh, if he's sleeping, that's good for him. He will get better. Said, no, 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 no. It's not this kind of death. It's not, not the kind of sleep that you get better for, from. Lazarus is dead. And he took the miraculous power of the one who is the resurrection and the life to bring Lazarus back from the dead, to raise Lazarus from the dead. So we've seen the progression from slumbering or dozing to sleep, to deep sleep, to the sleep of death, and then to finally death. Now, what about the spectrum of sleep? What types of sleep do we have? There are people who don't get any sleep at all. No sleep. Daniel 6 verse 18 said, Now the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting, and no musicians were brought before him. Also, his sleep went from him. And from time to time, we experience that maybe there is a problem, there is an illness, and we are unable to fall asleep. We want to sleep, we are lying down, the room is dark, but we just cannot fall asleep. So that is one spectrum, the extreme one. No sleep. We want to sleep, but we can't just fall asleep. The next stage, the next uh, point on the spectrum is moderate sleep. Ecclesiastes 5.12 says, The sleep of a laboring man is sweet, whether he eats little or much, but the abundance of the rich will not permit him to sleep. So moderate sleep, you know, you have a, your bedtime, when it's time to sleep, you lie down and you fall asleep. And when it's time to wake up and you've had enough rest, you wake up again. So that's moderate sleep. And for most of us, most adults, anything from six, seven, eight hours is good enough, moderate. We wake up after that uh, period and we are refreshed. That is moderate sleep. There's also excess sleep. So from no sleep to moderate sleep to excess sleep. There's also excess sleep. Some sleep too much. And the gentleman whose story we read, Acts 20 verse 9, you know, let me just read that again. Acts 20 verse 9. And in a window sat a certain young man named Eutychus who was sinking into a deep sleep. He was overcome by sleep. And as Paul continued speaking, he fell down from the third story and was taken up dead. So excess sleep is not good. And that is the other, the extreme end of the spectrum. No sleep, moderate sleep, and excess sleep. Now, for us as individuals, what kind of sleep patterns do we have? For babies and infants, they sleep a lot. In fact, they, as we grow older, the need decreases. It's like a U curve. Babies and infants sleep a lot, maybe 18 hours a day or more. And then as they grow older, they become toddlers, they are active a lot more, they are able to run around, maybe start school. The, 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 the amount of sleep reduces. They go to school, they start working, and then they begin to get into that moderate sleep range. And then as we grow older, we are less active. We are probably staying on the same spot, staying in the house from morning till night, and we tend to sleep more. So it's like a U curve. At, at, as babies and toddlers, we sleep a lot. It decreases, gets almost flat, and then rises again with age. So the sleep pattern of an infant is different from that of a youth or an adult, and definitely different from that of the aged. Now, our lifestyle also affects how much sleep we get. Our lifestyle also affects how much sleep we get. A lazy person or someone who refuses to work is probably going to sleep a lot. But someone who works, someone who is hardworking, who is uh, occupied, will not sleep as much as a lazy person. Um, Proverbs 19 verse 15 says, Laziness casts one into a deep sleep, and an idle person will suffer hunger. Proverbs 20 verse 13 says, Do not love sleep, lest you come to poverty. Open your eyes, 
and you will be satisfied with rest. So lifestyle also affects our sleep. If you sleep too much, you if you, or if you have not you don't have much to do, you're likely to default to sleep. If you're bored, you're likely to default to sleep. But if you're occupied, if you're busy, you will not sleep as much as someone who doesn't sleep very well. So we've talked about the stages and spectrum of sleep, uh, from slumbering to sleep to deep sleep to sleep of death to death. We've talked about those who don't sleep at all, those who sleep moderately, and those who sleep excessively. And we've seen the pattern in uh, as the human life as we grow old we've seen the pattern of sleep infants and babies sleep a lot and then that sleep reduces um, while we're active and working and as we grow old and we become old and retired we tend to sleep more because we are less active and we say that our lifestyle affects how much sleep we get someone who is not busy or occupied is likely to sleep a lot more than someone who is active but we are enjoined not to love too much sleep, not to sleep excessively. In other words, find something doing, get busy. Now let's talk about some sleep disorders. We're going to talk about some sleep disorders. The first one is insomnia, loss of sleep or lack of sleep. We said earlier, those who you know the spectrum, no sleep. People who lie down, they want to sleep or they can't sleep, that's insomnia. They really would love to sleep, but they can't fall asleep because that's you know, probably something going on in their mind or in their body. Maybe it's, an, it's, a, it's one of the side effects of something they've taken, a medication they've taken, or the, an illness is keeping them awake. So insomnia is lack of sleep. Then there's hypersomnia, that is excessive sleep or oversleeping. So when we described that spectrum earlier on from no sleep, no sleep is insomnia, moderate sleep is okay, and then excess sleep is hypersomnia. So excess sleep is oversleeping, insomnia is uh, no sleep, not getting enough sleep. There's also something called a condition called sleep apnea. That is when someone temporarily stops breathing during their sleep. They temporarily stop breathing during their sleep and then they start again. Uh, this can get dangerous, especially when the airway is blocked, when air is not passing easily in one's throat. And it's possible for, uh, for, for that to get uh, really dangerous. So sleep apnea is a sleep disorder. Anyone who suffers from that uh, needs to see a doctor because one stops breathing during sleep apnea, but usually it's for a short period. And one of the ways in which people know whether they, they have sleep apnea or not is the way that they snore. But if it bothers you, please see a doctor and let it get attended to. There's also a condition called sleep paralysis. That is, the mind is conscious, you feel you're awake, but you're unable to move. In your mind, you, 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 you see, you, you are aware of what's going on. You are, you are conscious, you are reasoning, but you're unable to move any part of your body. So that is called sleep paralysis. There's also another condition called somnambulism. Somnambulism, that is sleep walking. One is sleeping, you know, you see people, they just get up from bed and start walking, but they have no idea. They walk maybe from one room to another and then go back, but they had no idea that they were even walking. That's called somnambulism. Some researchers have suggested that uh, when Noah took those animals into the ark, that God put those animals in a state of somnambulism. So dangerous animals like lions and snakes and all that, they were very mild, they were very gentle, they were sleepwalking, they all went into the ark without disturbing anybody, they didn't eat each other, they didn't eat Noah, they didn't eat his family. Some have suggested that that was what God did to those animals to get them into the ark. Another sleep disorder is called somniloquism somniloquism that is sleep talking people talking in their sleep so these are disorders these are not normal and if anyone is experiencing any of these needs to uh, get regular it needs to get uh, medical attention now what are the effects of these sleep disorders 
someone who suffers from insomnia could have emotional difficulties, could get irritable, you know, can even lead to poor performance at work and the health of that kind of person can deteriorate. Remember, our bodies are not designed to be functioning round the clock. We are designed to take periods of rest. That's why you have days off. That's why you have holidays or vacation. We are, we are designed to slow down or even shut down so that our bodies can refresh and rejuvenate. For someone who doesn't sleep prolonged, day after day, you are not able to fall asleep. There might be uh, other uh, difficulties, health challenges that will arise from there. Now, someone who, is, who has hypersomnia, that is sleeping too much, will not be able to work well. And if that person is, for instance, maybe behind the wheels or handling a machinery, he may injure himself or injure others. So those who suffer from hypersomnia tend to perform poor quality job and put themselves at risk. Sleep apnea, like we've said, is temporary cessation of build, uh, breathing. Sleep, uh, breathing starts and stops. That could lead into other forms of health issues. So. It's not a condition to be uh, played around with or taken lightly. Sleepwalking, one could, uh, someone who walk, who sleep, uh, walk in their sleep, could walk into danger, could walk into fire, could fall down the stairs because he's not really conscious, he's not seeing where he or she is going, he's not even conscious that he or she is walking. And sleep talking, you could be talking rubbish in your sleep. The opposite says of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Sometimes, things that had been buried into your subconscious deep down. When one is in a state of somniloquism or sleep talking, anything can come out and that could uh, be harmful to others. So in summary, we're saying that there, we need to be mindful of our sleep health. Sleep is not something that we should take as an afterthought. It's important that we get good sleep, sleep moderately for the right amount of time, allow our bodies to relax so that we can sleep, have good sleep, occasionally deep sleep, but not the sleep of death and definitely not death. Praise the Lord. So it's possible moderate sleep without disorders is good for sound health. We, everything that we do, just like sleep, should be done in moderation. And if there are any, if anyone has symptoms or has any of those conditions that we described, insomnia, hypersomnia, and all that, sleepwalking, sleep talking, sleep apnea, please see your doctor and let them check you out. Everyone needs to have good uh, health, uh, sleep health. We need to enjoy sound sleep and enjoy good uh, sleep health. God bless you. Let us pray. Father Lord, we thank you for this opportunity. We pray, O oh Lord, that whatever may be, if any one of us is uh, encountering any of these sleep challenges, that you will send help to us, you will heal us, O oh Lord, and restore us to sound, moderate sleep, so that our bodies and our minds will be alert and awake and fully functioning in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed.